So if you're watching this and you're a new med student and you're just like freaking out because medical school is harder than you thought it would be, especially the studying part, come back. We'll kind of minimize that stress in this video. Let's get into it. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lux, I'm an internal medicine physician. Here at the MD Journey, we make videos just like this one to help students just like you doing better on the medical journey, but doing it with less stress. But in this video, I wanna share with you some of those core and critical study tips that I wish I knew earlier on in medical school it made things so much better. But hopefully it helps definitely a lot of you guys that are just starting medical school. And even if you're earlier in the phase or later, so if you're a pre-med or in your second, third, or fourth year medical student, I promise you some of these tips will definitely apply to you. And before we get into the tips and definitely before I forget, which I'm likely to do, check out some of the links and programs down below, especially some of our free resources like my eight-step study program or step-by-step -step system that I used in medical school to really kind of minimize my time. So that would be the first thing I'd definitely check out, as well as some of our paid programs in case you're interested. But let's get into the actual study tips. And study tip number one is to get to your review as quickly as possible. It may seem very obvious, but in an environment like medical school, it's actually very hard to do because as we know, information in medical school feels like we're drinking out of a fire hydrant and there's just so much information that we have to read or watch videos on or go to lecture to it doesn't always feel like we have time to do the latter or we do the review or we do the learning we do the flashcards or practice questions but really the first step in getting better grades but doing it in less time and minimizing some of that stress is to really walk yourself through your study strategy that you're currently using so ask yourself okay how am i gathering the notes from the videos or from lecture and then how effectively am I able to take that and go into something that I can quiz myself from effectively? And if the answer is like, I'm spending way too much time here and then I can't really use it very well, then you need to change your primary approach. Now, if you're interested on in how to doing that, I made a full step-by-step -step video on how to study like a pro, whether it be medical school or anything. So definitely check that out over here. And if you wanna know one of my favorite techniques, you can check out this kind of Q&E video right here on how you can take notes like a boss in medical school. But really what I found in medical school that my grades really improved, not necessarily when I spent more time. In fact, I started spending less time, but really when I was able to say, okay, how can I get into that review phase as quickly as possible? How can I make my notes in a way that I can easily quiz myself on as soon as I get home versus having to adjust this and review it and worst case, actually rereading my notes because that never worked. And if you really want a step-by-step -step process and how you can really create an efficient study machine and doing it in like, honestly, two days, then check out our rapid study accelerator program. It's really meant for students who kind of have a study system that they enjoy it, but don't really know how to make it more effective or what type of things to change that program would be for you and it's super quick but also very effective now tip number two is to minimize the resources you use now in medical school it's very easy to kind of have that oh this resource is going to be amazing students recommend this and this and you end up buying everything one that makes you more broke and medical school is very expensive as we know but two it just makes you overwhelmed because after you buy something or commit to something you feel like you have sometimes like to mm -hmm jam it in into your study schedule. I'm not sure what that was, but jam it in to your study schedule. And it just makes you more stressed out. And honestly, it takes away from the effectiveness of the resource. A lot of us will say, oh, I hated that resource, but honestly, it's because we were adding way too much on top of that resource. So a lot of times for our medical schools and medical students and brand new ones, I tell them, okay, don't add a resource until you actually need it. So if you are okay with your class material, you don't need another resource. But if you're studying something for physiology, and your class material is absolute garbage. That is a perfect time to say, I'm going to supplement my class material for a physiology physiology text or an all-in-one resource. And if you case you're interested, just let me know in your comments down below, what's the best resource for X, Y, and Z. Maybe I've made a video for it. Maybe I haven't. And I'll answer those questions down below. So my challenge to you, if you're a brand new medical student is to probably spend your first early parts of your studying, whether it be your first two or three or four weeks and try not to get any external resource. See how well your class material works for you. See how a certain free online resources work before you spend that financial as well as time investment on a resource that you may ultimately not end up using. And the beauty that comes out of this simple exercise is one, you get better at how to use your class material in a way that you can effectively start quizzing yourself for your upcoming quizzes and exams. But then two, you say, okay, this is where my class material is lacking. Maybe they don't have enough practice questions for me, or maybe I need videos and my class just doesn't do the best job. Then you can look for a specific resource that kind of fills that gap versus looking for a resource and then not really understanding how to best use it. And tip number three may just seem like I'm going against the tip that I just gave, but that's to use a high yield resource before your lectures. Now, no, I'm not just kind of spitting tips on both sides of the fence. Honestly, I recommend that you have as minimal resources as possible. But once you go through that two or three weeks phase of the medical school and you're like, I really need this to help me do better. So maybe you're saying, I love watching videos. 
perfect. Really to get the most out of your notes and lectures where it feels like, man, there's just so much information here. I feel like I get some of it, but not all of it. The best way to do it is to pick some kind of ideally a free online resource where they can just walk you through the high yield information. So example, if you're about to go and learn about something like such as hypertension, the best thing to do is not to actually go to your lecture and say, okay, professor, teach me everything about hypertension because they're gonna teach you everything about hypertension. You're not gonna know what's important and what's not. The best thing to do is to use some kind of high yield resource, whether it be a text or ideally a video. My videos are my favorite because one, you can speed them up and two, they happen to be a little bit more interactive and visual. And the most important thing is as you're watching that video, you don't force yourself to really do anything. Just kind of pay attention. You don't need to write notes. You don't really need to have an epiphany. The main benefit of this is as you're going to your lecture or you're reading your notes for your class, you kind of realize, oh, I've seen this before. Okay, maybe that's important. And then you can add that to your notes and make sure that you know that for the long term. But having some kind of basis that is not dependent on your syllabus or your lectures or the quality of the professor is really big. So once you understand the style of material that best helps you understand, for some of us it's text, for some of us it's videos, use those high yield resources. And again, drop me a comments down below of what resource or topic you want me to kind of cover. Um, but use that resource to really help the lecture stick. But, but again, minimize how many resources you use, but once you find out the type of resource you need, use that before lecture to really make the information stick. Now, tip number four is probably my favorite. If you really want to improve your quality of your studying and minimize some of those times, regain some of that free time, which all of you do, is to practice the one hour strategy. Now, this is something that I forced myself to do my first semester of medical school because I was spending like way too many damn hours studying. And I was like, ah, studying eight to 10 hours and saying, this kind of sucks. And to do this for three or four years, like that's kind of BS. So the simple question I start asking myself is, okay, what would I do differently if I took one hour away from my studying? So if I'm studying 10 hours now, what would nine hours look like? And that really forces you to say, okay, I'm not going to use this resource. Let's just give it a shot. And then I would take a quiz and think, oh, the grade is about the same or better or not that much worse. So I didn't really need that extra hour, that one hour, those five hours extra a week um, really didn't make a difference. And then you try that same strategy again. How can I go from nine to eight hours, eight to seven hours, seven to five hours? Eventually I skipped two hours there, but ultimately I was able to go from 10 hours of studying to five hours of studying because I took away what wasn't important and I made myself more efficient on the hours that I had. So if you're a student who is studying way too many darn hours in your day to day, use that one hour strategy to really say, okay, I want an hour to myself to do whatever, exercise, sleep, nap, um, and instead of saying, I'm going to sleep less, I'm going to actually take away an hour from my study strategy and ask myself, what is the least important thing? And again, if you really want to know how to do that, the rapid study accelerated program helps you do just that. And if you really want a full in-depth study program, then the level up your studying program will also help you do just that. But if you want to join hundreds of other students who have just practiced that simple strategy of taking an hour away from their study strategy and not costing their ultimate performance, then definitely try out the one hour strategy. Let me know in the comments down below how that works for you. And tip number five, which is similar to tip number one, but it's to do as multiple rounds of review as possible. Now, most students, if you think, go to lecture, and that's, I would consider, half the past material because not everything sticks. And then most students will do some kind of review after the material is presented, whether it be flashcards, practice questions, whiteboards, something of the sorts. So that pass will count as one, lecture will count as a, a half. So you've kind of covered the material about one and a half times. Now, until test time, most students won't touch the material at all. Maybe they'll touch it on the weekend to cover it about two and a half times, but that's pretty much it. I would say to create a system where you can review your material as much as possible. And again, check out that how to study like a pro in medical school, step-by-step -step, free video here. And I really walk you through a very kind of system based of how much to do on the day of, the next day, the weekend, and kind of the week before your exam to really get like three to four to five repetitions of your material. And that's really where you can go into the test saying, I know this stuff, I'll, feel, I'll just be fine. But going back to the first tip, the real way to do as many reviews as possible is get into that review phase as quickly as possible as so you gotta minimize some of that information gathering phase. And again, Lots of other videos and resources that I'll link down below to avoid making this video very long. But those guys are some of my biggest tips on really how to succeed as a brand new medical student or really any student on their medical journey. Um, hopefully these tips are helpful to you. If you did find them helpful, then go ahead and hit that like button, smash it, destroy it, because again, it helps this video out and the YouTube channel helps the channel out. But most importantly for me is that it gets the video out in front of somebody who may need it. So ideally I like to talk to this video as if I'm just talking to you. So if you found this video helpful, just 
just hit that like button. Um, and if you're new here, if you're lurking here, you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, get more videos like this on a weekly basis. But make sure you drop your comments down below. I love interacting with you guys in the comments. I love the love and support, and I'd like to ideally support you further on your journey. So make sure you drop those comments down below. And again, if you want to check out any of our programs like the Rapid Study Accelerator, the Level Up Your Studying Program, or working with me one-on-one -on -one to help improve your studying, all of those will be linked down below. But with that being said, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of my journey. Hopefully that was a little help to you guys on yours. I'll see you guys in the next one. And if you enjoyed this video, then check out this step-by-step -step video on how to study, as well as this video on how you can study using Anki like a pro. Hopefully these videos help you out in your journey. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, my friends.